Salahuddin Ayyubi, known as Saladin. A voice emerges from a brave and mighty young man. How can I find joy while Jerusalem and Masjid al-Aqsa remain under crusader occupation? How can I eat and be content while this persists? How can I sleep peacefully at night? Get ready. We are about to share a story that will move us all of a true Islamic hero the guardian of Masjid al-Aqsa, Khadim al-Haramain, conqueror of Jerusalem, Al-Malik Abu al-Muzaffar Salahuddin Ayyubi. For this video, extensive research has been conducted, including script writing, voiceover, and video editing. We are a non-profit channel, free from advertisements, a team of dedicated volunteers working to share the truth. If you wish to support our efforts in spreading the truth, you can also subscribe to our channel and become part of our mission. Once upon a time, in Baghdad, there lived a renowned carpenter. In the twilight of his life, he dedicated much time to crafting a splendid mimbar from walnut wood. He poured immense effort into the mimbar, captivating all who beheld its beauty. The mimbar, born from the carpenter's toil and tears, soon gained widespread acclaim. Whenever someone visited Baghdad, they would seek out the carpenter. They would approach him, saying, Sell us this mimbar, so we may take it to our mosque. His response was always the same. This mimbar is destined for Masjid al-Aqsa. During that period, Jerusalem was under the occupation of the Crusaders. The Crusaders received continuous support from the Pope and Europe. The Seljuk Empire had collapsed. Numerous small Islamic states emerged in Anatolia and Mesopotamia, and they engaged in constant conflicts among themselves. In Egypt, the Bataniya Fatimids were established, weakening the Muslims from within. For Muslims, the dream of reclaiming Jerusalem remained distant amidst these three challenges. Everyone took it as a dream. Yet, that carpenter continued to reply with unwavering confidence. This is what I can do. I'm a craftsman. I carve mimbers. Let a brave soul arise and seize Jerusalem so that this mimber may find its place. The story of this mimber spread to nearly every city as people shared stories of its exquisite beauty. A young boy, perhaps seven or eight years old, heard the same account. That little boy was none other than Salahuddin Ayyubi. And from the moment he heard this story, he harbored one steadfast ambition to recapture Jerusalem from the Christians and put that member in its place. Born in the Iraqi city of Tikrit, Salahuddin Ayyubi was the son of a Kurdish father and a Turkish mother. His inclination towards religious studies surpassed his interest in military training. He delved into subjects such as logic, philosophy, sociology, fiqh, history, and pursued arts and sciences. He completed his education at Hadith University in Damascus. Muslims regarded him as an exemplary sultan, while the Crusaders saw him as a true Islamic hero. Both Eastern and Western historians and writers praise him in their works, and the sources unanimously depict him as pious, compassionate, cheerful, courageous, and formidable. When this remarkable figure reached the age of 26, he assumed numerous responsibilities in the state alongside his uncle, Shirko. As Salahuddin grew older, fate paved the way for him to conquer Jerusalem. How, you may ask? The Sultan of the Zengid state, Nuruddin Zengi, unified all Turkish states under his rule and established a partial Islamic alliance, successfully reclaiming numerous cities from the Crusaders. When the Fatimid state of Egypt faced a crisis, the Crusaders of Jerusalem sought to expand their influence in the Middle East. The Crusaders besieged Cairo in 1168. Sultan Nur ad-Din Zengi also set his sights on Egypt. Because whoever gained control of Egypt would hold a strategic advantage over the opposition. 
the king of the Fatimid state sought assistance from Nur ad-Din Zengi. The Sultan dispatched his commanders, Shirko and Salahuddin. And Shirko cleansed all of Egypt from the Crusaders. Due to his achievements, Shirko was appointed as the vizier of Egypt, but he passed away shortly after assuming the position. Salahuddin Ayyubi succeeded his uncle as the vizier of Egypt and became the commander of Sultan Nur ad-Din Zengi's army in Egypt. At the age of 31, he assumed both these significant roles simultaneously, holding the title of Malik and serving as the vizier of Egypt. After Salahuddin gained control of Egypt, he began to confront those who resisted, him and the Turks, the Fatimids and the Crusaders and Byzantines who supported them. With his absolute authority over Egypt, Salahuddin reorganized the army. He worked in support of Ahl Sunnah and established Sunni madrasas and new institutions. Gradually, he purged the Bataniya Fatimids from the bureaucracy. Ultimately, by order of Nur ad-Din Zengi in 1171, he brought an end to the rule of the Bataniya Fatimids. During this period of progress, he received distressing news. Sultan Nur ad-Din Zengi had passed away. On the one hand, he endeavored to preserve the unity of the state and safeguard the cohesion of the Islamic states established by the Sultan. While on the other hand, he had to confront the Crusaders. Like every Islamic commander of that era, Salahuddin Ayyubi had three aspirations, securing the unity of Muslims, liberating Jerusalem from occupation, and conquering Constantinople or Istanbul. The unity of Islamic states was solidified through victorious battles and the struggle against the Crusaders. The next objective was the recapture of Jerusalem. Qadi Bahaddin ibn Shaddad describes Salahuddin Ayyubi's love and longing for Jerusalem in these words. His burden and sorrow for Jerusalem were so heavy that even mountains couldn't bear them. He resembled a mother grieving for her lost child. He would ride his horse from place to place, calling upon Muslims to wage jihad for the liberation of Jerusalem. He would address the masses and exclaim, O Muslims, for the sake of Islam, for Islam, tears of sadness always filled his eyes. This was because Jerusalem remained under occupation. He would say, How can I smile? as long as the Crusaders control the city of Jerusalem and Masjid al-Aqsa. How can I be content and eat in peace as I desire? How can I sleep peacefully at night? Salahuddin Ayyubi was resolute in his quest to retake Jerusalem. However, before initiating the conquest of Jerusalem, careful coordination was necessary. He skillfully organized and disciplined numerous irregular forces, shifting the balance of power in his favor. His primary focus was directed towards the Latin Crusader states. During this period, the King of Jerusalem died, and Guy of Lusignan succeeded him. Salahuddin began his progress step by step. He conquered cities such as Diyarbakir, Urfa, Harran, Raqqa, Habur, Nusaybin, and many other cities before seizing Aleppo, which held strategic importance on the path to Jerusalem. The Sultan first laid siege to the city of Tiberias. Tiberias held significant strategic value. His objective was to lure the king of Jerusalem and his armies to Hittin, near Tiberias, in northern Palestine. This was because he had devised a plan to alter the battle's course there. Hittin was renowned for its water wells. In advance, Sultan Salahuddin seized control of the water wells leading to Hittin and deliberately filled them with rocks and sand. Consequently, the water wells became unusable. Upon the king and his army's arrival at Hittin, they were astonished to find the wells completely devoid of water. The entire army was compelled to engage in battle, dehydrated, 
and fatigued under the scorching heat of the desert. The Battle of Hittim commenced on July 4th, 1187. In this battle, Salahuddin triumphed over the Crusader army led by the King of Jerusalem, Guy of Lusignan. Following this victory, Salahuddin swiftly initiated a conquest operation. The extensive losses suffered by the Crusaders enabled the Muslims to gain control over nearly the entire kingdom of Jerusalem. They captured numerous fortresses, including Akka, Tiberias, Ascalon, Nablus, Ramla, and Gaza. Within a matter of weeks, 52 cities, large and small, were conquered, and finally the time came for Jerusalem. On September 20th, 1187, the Sultan laid siege to Jerusalem. Catapults pounded the city walls. Before long, the northeast walls were breached. The catapults were relocated there. After a short while, the wall was completely destroyed. Despite the Crusaders' attempts to stage a breakout operation, they failed to succeed. It was evident that they could no longer maintain control over the city. They requested safe passage from Salahuddin Ayyubi, offering a ransom for their lives, preservation of crops, undamaged houses, and the release of Muslim prisoners. Sultan Salahuddin accepted the terms, as he wished to ensure the safety of the Muslim prisoners and avoid further casualties by prolonging the battle. On the auspicious occasion of the Miraj miracle, 27th Rajab, 832, 2nd of October, 1187, on a Friday, Jerusalem was reclaimed. Salahuddin Ayyubi's victory extended beyond the military realm. His triumph marked the dawn of a systematic and progressive state. Under his leadership, numerous madrasas, hospitals, and mosques were constructed. This era witnessed the zenith of knowledge in the Islamic world. Scholars of the time were drawn to the regions under Salahuddin Ayyubi's control. Through his support for scholars, he fostered the advancement and significant progress of knowledge. Scholars and students authored many works during this period. His governance served as a guiding light for numerous statesmen who came after him. On the 4th of March, 1193, his remarkable life came to an end as this devoted servant of Islam took his last breath in Damascus. According to his will, after his death, his burial shroud, Kafan, was tied to a spear and brought before the people, accompanied by these words resonating through the streets of Damascus. O Muslims, O people, the conqueror of Egypt, Yemen, Syria, Palestine, Jerusalem, Sultan Salahuddin, took nothing from this world except this burial shroud. Take this as a lesson and do not be deceived by the world. He had such a purpose in life that purpose itself kept him alive. He showed us how a Muslim should set goals in life, a heart beating for Allah, a heart beating to establish justice in the world, and to bring the beauties of Islam to those who are unaware. Taking Jerusalem was granted to the one with such awareness. So why is it not granted to us? Because we need to change ourselves first. Our lives are focused on this world. Our dreams are worldly dreams, and our goals are worldly goals. Let us be sincere. Most of us think only about our comfort and ourselves. We need to scrutinize ourselves and have a heart that beats for Allah. We need to have lofty goals for Islam. Remember, just like the great Sultan Salahuddin, someday our bodies will be shrouded in burial shrouds, and those burial shrouds will have no pockets.